And so the recording will be available post the session. I should get it up on the Graduate School YouTube channel later today, and we'll be sending out a follow-up email with all of you with a link to the uh, video recording along with a survey for the session. So I am going to allow us to jump right in. I will quickly introduce our panelists and then I will, with our first question, I will also let them introduce themselves and talk a little bit more, a bit more about uh, what they did at UTSA as far as their programs and then what they're doing currently. So we have Victoria Whalen, Patrick Stockton, and Yvonne Addison. And the first question we have is, what has been your career path? And I think we'll start back from your degree at UTSA and then where you are now. So we'll start with Victoria. All right. Um, first, first one up. That's oh, peer pressure, right? Um, <laughs> so yeah, my career path, um, it, it's been pretty typical, I'd say. Um, so you know, graduated high school, came to San Antonio and UTSA for my undergraduate degree, and I got a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering with a minor in Business Administration, so that's kind of where it differed from like your typical engineering track. Um, I thought that it might be nice to have that kind of rounded experience to gain other sort of business principles as well, because I figured, you know, in engineering, if you make stuff, you're going to have to know how to sell it or market it to somebody else, right? So, once I graduated, I think I walked the stage uh, and then two weeks later, I started my job. So I just went right directly into the workforce. Um, I started out as an engineer in the manufacturing and robotics technology department at Southwest Research Institute. So here in San Antonio, um, and I started out in a mechanical design role. So I, I work on all sorts of design applications for our um, robotic and automation systems that go into manufacturing systems or just developing new processes. So we do a lot of new process development as well. Um, so from there, I, I have been promoted once to research engineer. So that's now my current position. And I do a little bit more on the promotional side as well currently. So I utilize that business minor a little bit with my, my current work. So I get to get out and talk to people and try and bring in work um, that I'm excited and interested about. Um, that's kind of my career path up to this point, at least. Yeah, as I start speaking without unmuting myself. Thank you, Victoria. And we'll uh, go on to Patrick. Well, hello, everybody. So my name is Patrick Stockton. I grew up around San Antonio, more in a small farming town north of here called Sisterdale, north of Bernie. Um, but I started my bachelor's back in 2011. I did my bachelor's in computer engineering here at UTSA. Uh, all the way up between finishing that in 2016, I was heavily involved with the College of Engineering STEM outreach program, helping out schools, getting, them, getting the students K-12 through interested in the programs and stuff like that. It was a lot of cool experiences. Uh, but at the same time, I was involved with a lot of the student orgs as well. So I, I focused probably a little too much on the student org side, not as much on classes, but I still graduated in the end, luckily. Um, afterwards, I jumped straight into the master's. Uh, I did my master's here at UTSA in computer engineering as well. Started that in 20, fall 2016. Um, finished that May 2020, actually. I took a little bit of a, a longer stretch. Um, in that time, I was still heavily involved with all the different programs, but I also managed to get a couple of internships that were very insightful. Um, one more technical with uh, NASA Armstrong, the other one more you could say strategic planning, I guess, uh, with NASA DC. And that kind of gave me a, an awesome look at both sides of basically what you would find in any type of career path um, as an engineer, both the management side and both the technical side. Afterwards, um, spring 2020, I started my uh, first official job with the Air Force here in San Antonio uh, as a civil service engineer and have progressed into starting my PhD in fall 2020 as well. So full-time student, full-time employee, don't have any time to sleep, but you only you can only do what you, you can only do what you can do. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. And last but not least, Yvonne, and this is her second panel she's been on for us uh, this semester. So Yvonne, thank you for being here. And if she doesn't mention it, she is also, in addition to her career and being an alumni, she is the president of UTSA's Alumni Association. So Yvonne. Thanks, John. I appreciate the opportunity to participate 
um, in these panels. It's been a lot of fun. Um, so <clears throat> I um, completed my bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering at UTSA. Um, while I was there, I uh, became an engineering assistant at Intertech Automotive Research in the Automatic Transmission Lab. So it was a great opportunity, grateful that they allowed me to work part-time while I was going to school full-time, but I was getting hands-on experience and that was really exciting. Um, and then once I graduated, I was kind of looking to maybe try a different industry and um, aviation had always been kind of a, a interest of mine. Um, so I attended a UTSA career fair uh, the STEM career fair at the time, it was uh, geared just towards STEM majors. Um, and I met uh, Standard Aero uh, representatives there. And um, so I uh, fortunately um, landed a job as a, a, an engineer with them in the, uh, <clears throat> trying to remember, engineering services. But we what what our team did was basically assist um, the Air Force and in, in original engine manufacturers with research projects and doing testing on engines, um, tear down inspections, things like that. So Standard Aero, if you're not familiar, um, they're located at Port San Antonio and they do mil uh, military and commercial MRO, which is maintenance, repairs and overhauls on engines. So um, spent a couple of years doing that, uh, helping, you know, like I said, assisting these research endeavors. And then I had an opportunity to move actually to the, the, the the production side, which is the actual tearing down and repairing and all that of the engines. I worked in the power section um, team there. So when the engines would come in, um, I would led the team to, to build a work scope around what we were gonna do to that engine before it you know, got all put back together and sent back to our customer. <clears throat> I worked there for in that department for a few years. And then I started getting heavily involved in continuous improvement processes and um, improve improvements overall, like processes across the plant, not just focusing on the engine, but um, how we were doing what we were doing to those engines and the aircraft parts. And through that got um, experience in lean manufacturing to, um, tools and techniques. Uh, I also earned my project management professional during this time. Um, so it was very heavy focus on project management in my role. And, and you'll find that um, does it does it go away as an engineer? You're involved in projects in one way, shape, or form as in a role um, on those teams. And so I did a continuous improvement projects, and um, a couple of the projects got caught the interest of our um, incoming sector president, who was looking to re-energize our strategy um, approaches, and so asked me to come and lead the uh, strategic initiatives um, side of what we were trying to do as a business. And so I got involved in business development. And um, at that point was kind of where my career started to kind of come to a fork in the road. Um, and I think you'll find this happens to, to a lot of people is, do I want to stay in a technical engineering capacity or do I want to go into management? And um, kind of thinking about some of the opportunities and my skill sets, um, where I wanted to grow professionally, um, the management route was definitely something I was interested in. So I returned to UTSA and I completed the executive MBA program there so I could get more of a holistic background in accounting and finance and strategy and, and uh, you know, some of those things that are broader to outside of just a technical role. Um, so I worked I continued working in, in other um, capacities, doing sales and operations planning and, and really just kind of getting an, getting exposure and, and experience in different facets of running a business versus just the technical side. Um, and my husband, who has been in the construction industry, commercial construction industry for several years, um, primarily on the finance side, um, had approached me about potentially starting my own company, utilizing not just the project management skill set, but what I had learned in terms of running a, running a business <clears throat> and uh, to set up uh, as a commercial general contractor. And so I would be going into a completely different industry um, outside of aviation and moving into commercial construction. And uh, so a couple of years ago, um, kind of the stars aligned and 
it was an exciting and maybe a nervous time uh, to, to jump ship from Standard Arrow to start my own company. So I formed Standard, I mean, Addison Prime. Uh, we are a commercial general contractor here in San Antonio, um, right on the eve of the pandemic. So about a month later, um, the city shut down. And so I had to navigate how to, you know, get growing as a business and, and moving along and get everything set up and get business and, and um, you know, doing all like bids and estimating and winning projects and getting those projects off the ground all within the realm of, you know, what was going on with the city being shut down. And um, fortunately, in the construction industry, it has not slowed down at all. It's been blowing and going. We've been busy even more this year than we were last year and even more than we were in 2020. So um, it's been an interesting um, route to go, you know, from, from automotive to aviation to construction. Um, you know, maybe this is where I land for the good or maybe we, you know, venture off into something else down the road. Um, I don't know, but it's been a wonderful experience of, of using my technical experience and things that I learned at UTSA and my role as an engineer and learning to solve problems um, to run a, run a business. And then uh, a few years ago, um, as John mentioned, I have been very involved with the Alumni Association for many years. Um, when uh, Dean Joanne Browning came to UTSA, we approached her about starting an alumni council uh, for the College of Engineering, at the time College of Engineering. Um, and so she was 100% on board. So uh, we spearheaded kind of the, the guinea pig structure of setting up an alumni council with that college. And um, thankfully it's been, it was you know a great project to take out on. We had a lot of support. Um, we're still going um, as an alumni council, but we've also, it sort of laid the groundwork for other colleges to set up their own alumni councils as well. So we've kind of proved our, our structure and our methods and, and shared the wealth and they've been able to set up alumni councils in other areas. So that's been a lot of fun too. Thanks, Yvonne. So Yvonne touched on kind of how she got to where she is right now. Uh, for Victoria and Patrick, how, what interest and experiences led you to your current position? Because I know, Victoria, you're at Southwest Research and Patrick, you're with the military. So what kind of, in your current position, what interested you and what experiences led you to be in your current, in your current job? And we'll start with Patrick. Yeah, for sure. Um, so with my involvement with the student organizations back undergrad and master's, we formed one called Advanced Robotics, which was a robotics org to focus on getting people, students interested in learning about robotics from uh, from scratch to competitions. And in that in that in that time, we were looking for projects and competitions to work on, and we found the Air Force was doing a, a nationwide competition. We got in contact with them, and eventually they said yes, which is awesome. The San Antonio team here. And that led me to build all those contacts and see how the inner workings there worked. So that was pretty much, that was probably one of my prime, um, I guess, inspirations for looking into the civil service side, but as well as all the different opportunities that stem from that in this case. W w throughout the, um, the time I was involved with the different orgs in the College of Engineering at the time, um, I, I did get to meet a lot of great people and <clears throat> make a lot of great, uh, great contacts. So kind of seeing how everything worked out and all meshed together. Uh, for me, it was more just convenience of the job location here in San Antonio as well, but all the awesome work that they do um, with the Air Force there. So it was, it was a mixture of the experiences I had through my contacts throughout the College of Engineering, as well as the work alignment of what, they, what, our, job does, uh, what our job is here in San Antonio. Perfect, thank you. And Victoria? Yeah, so I, I think um, in terms of landing the role that I did um, when I got out of school, I, I think that was more uh, fate, like luck almost, right place, right time. Um, sometimes it just happens that way that, you know, an application comes across your lap that you're like, oh, I'll apply for this. You know, it sounds really neat. And then you, you get it somehow by, you know, some some magical power, right? So, but. I think 
a big portion of like what was interesting to me in that position was, you know, robots are just like, I mean, Patrick kind of touched on it, right? He, he developed an um, organization specifically for that, right? At UTSA. Uh, robots are super cool. Uh, I don't know how much experience you guys have with them, but if you need to see a robot arm, just go to any of the labs in the engineering building and go look at one. Um, they're really cool. Uh, so the, the mechanical design portion of, of getting robots to do things in different areas of automation was, was really intriguing to me. Um, and that's kind of what the application called for. But when I went through school and undergrad, I, you know, I didn't really find any areas that I didn't like. So when I got to like graduation, I got really nervous because I was like, I don't know what I want to do. Like I thought I'd narrow it down with my mechanical engineering, but it's so broad still. Like you heard Yvonne talk about all the different industries she's been in. Um, and for me, I was like, I, any of those sound great, you know, and maybe, you know, one day that the, I'll get to touch in all of them. But I, it, that's why I really say it goes back to the right place at the right time, because once I toured and I did my interview here at Southwest Research Institute, and I saw like they have just 20 robots laying around that you, like people were just actively programming on. And then there's like, these huge systems that they're building and everybody seemed to be really hands-on. I was like, ah, that's for me. You know, like it, it's weird that when you know, you know. Um, in terms of experiences that I, I did to get there, um, it was it was an internship at the Texas Department of Transportation. So again, kind of, you know, on the civil DOT side of things. Um, but that really just gave me the skills to communicate better with project teams, I think more than anything. Uh, and they were great people and great people to learn from. Um, so that experience, as well as having some experiences through the College of Engineering, um, you know, now recently names changed, right? But through those programs and the clubs at UTSA, um, as well as like an undergraduate research position, I was just able to gain all of these different skills that I think was really helpful in helping me get to the right place at the right time. Uh, designed luck, I guess. Thank you. So what do you feel, I mean, and you can maybe think back to as you were stepping out of your program, this is probably a two-part question is, is when should you, or when did you, whichever way you want to go, start looking for the job opportunities while you're in your program? That's one. And two, um, um, what's the job market like in in these various careers like was there a lot of opportunities is it competitive um, and we'll start with Yvonne thanks John um so I started looking probably once I was a junior or I had enough junior level credits to qualify as a junior and had started taking some of my um, in major courses um I because I found that some of the pro the internships and and opportunities um, through like the UTSA uh, job bank online, um, you know, they were they were looking for folks who had gone through a, a, at least a few semesters of college already. So you've got some, you've dabbled in some of your engineering classes and you're really understanding like the technical needs of the role. Um, and then I would attend the career fairs and kind of just see who's there and what uh, roles they were offering, whether they're internships or part-time opportunities, and then kind of gearing up for what type of roles would be there for, you know, full-time once I, once I completed my coursework. Um, and I would say, I mean, through the time that I've been at, you know, completed my degree, um, you know, always kind of just kept my eye, ear and eye open to maybe what would be my, you know, you know, what does a job market look like out there? What other roles are there? You know, I, I was at Standard Arrow for nine years because they offered me an opportunity to move into different roles and that really challenged me. And I, I was so appreciative of that. Um, but sometimes that's not always the case depending on the employer. So I always recommend that you just kind of keep your ears and eyes open um, to, you know, what, as you grow, what you're interested, you know, as your interests change, or perhaps you want to specialize in something. Um, or like I mentioned, in my case, you know, I came to that sort of fork in the road of, of going into management or staying in a technical um, technical role and maybe pursuing a, an advanced engineering degree um, is also an option. But we've I've not seen a shortage. I, I mean, in engineering and technical STEM 
capacity. I mean, there's the sky's the limit. There's just so many job opportunities and so many different um, industries. And so I, I think uh, the, the future still looks bright. I, I think, uh, you know, plenty of opportunities out there for, for, for folks. Thank you, uh, Victoria. Yeah, um, I think in terms of so for the full time position, I, I second everything Yvonne said about internships. Definitely, as soon as you start getting credits to qualify as a junior, experiences are absolutely critical um, in helping you determine more what you're wanting out of a career in you know the STEM industry. But in terms of a full time position, I probably started applying. Ooh, October was. And I think I was kind of late to the game. I found that out later because there's so many applications. I was like, surely nobody's going to want to hire me a year in advance, but that is not the case. They do. People look a year in advance. So you should absolutely uh, be on the lookout for opportunities as they come across, right? Um, always have your finger on the pulse. Um, in terms of, you know, are we hiring and what's kind of the take on the industry? Robotics and automation is booming right now. Um, San Antonio in particular is, is really gaining traction as one of the hot spots in the United States for robotics and automation. Um, we're getting a lot of startup companies and a lot of just expertise coming into this area and everybody seems to be hiring. I mean, I know my department in particular is, is hiring like crazy right now um, because we're trying to keep up with that demand. Um, so yes, uh, if you're interested at all, I think you know, get out there and start looking because there's something in my industry and there's certainly something in all the others. Patrick? Yeah, so Victoria and Yvonne basically not, uh, hit the nail on the head with that one. So it depends on one, what you're looking for, a full-time job or internship. Those definitely have a different time frame that you want to consider. Uh, jobs, for example, the market, if you look at San Antonio or local areas, it depends on what is nearby. You have a lot of aerospace, a lot of DOD here in San Antonio. You have much more different types of tech in Austin, for example. So those markets are dependent on also what you know companies are physically there also. Uh, teleworking nowadays makes it a lot easier or remote working makes it a lot easier to find different opportunities while remaining in different locations. So that's super cool. Um, but if you want to apply to one, I would say for internships, uh, whether you're undergrad or um, doing your master's or PhD, definitely try to do it at least a semester early or two semesters early. If you're aiming for a summer, start applying to internships in October, hopefully at latest the previous year. Uh, jobs, you can go as early as a year um, beforehand, like Victoria said. Uh, for example, my Air Force job, I applied to it in April 2019. I didn't get the offer until 20, or December 2019, um, and then I didn't get done with the full process until about six months ago, <laughs> but that was, that was for some other clearance stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely take all those like time frames in consideration because they, they do play a, a, a big role in that too. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to ask you all to kind of think back a little bit. and. As, a, as now a professional in your careers, what do you wish you knew then when you were in school that you know now, now that you're in your, your career? And we'll start with Victoria. Sure, yeah, this is a, a big question. There's so much stuff that you like, from your academic and textbook type teaching, you just, you can't absorb it all, right? You can't be an expert at everything. Um, so once you get out into the real world and you get on a real project and you're starting to deploy this engineering and STEM knowledge that you have, it is like so different because they don't always give you, you know, in a you know, problem in a textbook. They don't always, they tell you everything you need to solve it, right? But in the real world, who knows what you're gonna actually get? Um, you might not have all the information. And then there's a discovery process of trying to go and find it and doing the legwork from all of these other courses um, and pulling it into that. So I think that one of the biggest things that was, at least for me, like a, a little bit of a switch of gears um, in the industry was that I needed to have that hands-on experience. The more hands-on experience that you can have, I really think that that was, if I would have known freshman year of college, like, you know, before I was even convinced that engineering was for me, I would have like started instantly trying to tinker with something in my garage or 
you know, maybe even try and learn some code, right? Um, just explore whatever pathway you're in, explore those interests, um, because that experience is absolutely invaluable. Um, it's crazy how many times from like the first project I worked on to, you know, the several I'm working on right now that I've drawn experiences, even though it's not like the same thing. I'm like, oh, when I did that on this one, it failed, you know, a lot of times. And then I did it over here. So I know where to start now, um, but you really only get that through trial and error, I think, and, and that hands-on experience. Perfect. Thank you. And Yvonne? Yeah, I think um, what was eye opening for me or what I didn't know in school so much or experienced in, in during you know, undergrad um, was the opportunities you would have to, you know, learn from others um, in a more collaborative manner than just having to focus and solve problems all by yourself, because I think, you know, in undergrad or you know, even in graduate school, um, a lot of times you're working through problems and you have to do it on your own. You have to struggle through the math, do the research, you know, things like that, kind of figure it out on your own because you need to turn over your own work. Um, and uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of focus on obviously, you know, don't cheat, don't collaborate and, and things like that. But in the real world, um, it doesn't work like that at all. Like you're expected to work with other people. Um, you may even find you're working with people who are not uh, who do not have technical backgrounds. Maybe they're in accounting, finance, or, um, you know, so so there's these other sort of pulleys happening on, on the technical side that you're working that you have to navigate. Um, and then, of course, you know, when it comes to the technical problems itself, there's a lot of expertise around you and your other team members, um, mentors, you know, maybe even your boss um, that you can lean on and say, hey, I've got this problem. Have you worked something similar? Do you, you know, are you familiar with this? Can you help me? So you're not necessarily having to start from scratch. Um, you may have some other resources that you can sort of lean on or bring in and then capitalize on, um, which I, I, you know, not having exposure to that as a, as a student um, before it was like, wow, okay, this is totally different. Like it's, it's a lot easier than, than I felt. It was a lot easier than an undergrad where you're really having to, to do a lot of the, um, problem solving on your own, uh, just because of the nature of the academic structure, right? So um, I thought that was very enlightening and, and I, I like that. Cool, thank you. And in the interest of time, because I do want to make sure to get to questions and I have, I had uh, two more questions I want to ask, but I'm actually going to go off script for a minute and ask you a question that I didn't initially submit to you, because I think it's important, um, is LinkedIn. How important is first of all, having a presence on LinkedIn in your, uh, in your career fields and how important is it not to just have a footprint, but to keep your LinkedIn um, information up to date? And we'll start with Patrick. Yeah, so LinkedIn is incredibly important. Um, being able to list your degrees, your skills, your certifications, uh, your involvement, anything like that is a great way to kind of build a um, showcase for yourself. And from what I can tell, a lot of employers, recruiters, managers, they all kind of browse through every once in a while. Um, I, at least once a month, I sometimes get a soft offer for a different job. Um, and that's awesome, right? That the opportunity is there. Uh, but it's very important that if you do want to get involved with LinkedIn, that you do keep up to date with it. And you, at least you monitor it and um, if you see a colleague, you know, get accepted for a job or gets a cool reward, um, if you just show, uh, you know, applause or whatever, you'll start to get traction and um, show that you're that you're active. And in, in my experience, last I think I've been using it for five years. It has made a actual huge impact on networking and everything else. So for me, at least, very important. <laughs> Perfect. Any Vaughn? Yeah, I think uh, LinkedIn is it. It's definitely still a vital tool. Um, I I would suggest you know if you are there particular projects that you want to highlight, like maybe just write up a little blurb about your project. Maybe you can you know post a picture or something, um, just to kind of show people like, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working on. Um, because when people go to look at your profile, they want to see you know oh have has has this person 
written anything or blogged about anything? Um, are you active in your actual, you know, well, profession, pre-profession as a student? Um, one of the other things I, I, I will be remiss if I don't mention this, John. So um, the Roadrunner Network is actually like an inter internal um, network uh, platform that I would highly recommend everybody on here. If you're not registered, um, go online. It's really easy to set up a profile and you can, you can um, join your own specific college and then you can connect with other students, alumni, um, I've had several folks reach out to me and we've had these great like Zoom one-on-ones where they ask me questions like directly, hey, you know, how was school? What do you have tips for me? What is the um, job market like? You know, what, what have you experienced? And, and so it's been a great way to, to mentor um, students or, you know, um, connect with other alumni. So I, I would suggest in addition to LinkedIn, definitely check out the Roadrunner Network. It's free and um, there's a lot of folks on there that you can connect with. And there's a really great discussion threads too. So you might have a question that somebody's already posed and um, there's some dialogue on it and you can, can do that. So, but yeah, LinkedIn, yeah, it's, it's good. I know we try to stay active. Like I stay active, like even with my business, Addison Prime has their own LinkedIn and we try to post and do some things on there. And then I share and so I, I get, you know, folks kind of following our journey, following along on our journey. And so that's a, a nice way to stay relevant in the social sphere of, of the internet as a professional. Thank you. And uh, Victoria, what are your thoughts on LinkedIn? Oh, I think all the points brought up were really valid. And I'll just highlight that at least, you know, especially now that we're in this kind of booming market for robotics and automation, right? Um, the people that we've been hiring and you know we've been doing interviews constantly so we we do look at linkedin like we go one of the first things we do when because we interview as panels um here at southwest so the, the problem right is that all of us are just trying to figure out more of who you are than maybe what your resume says so we'll do a little bit of digging on our own and we'll go on to linkedin and the first thing we do is type in your name um just to kind of see what you're like what 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 are your interests what do you do you know um, and LinkedIn's a great professional platform, right? It's, it's way better to like communicate yourself and other interests that you might have, right? If you link it on your resume, then people can go look and kind of put a face to the name. Um, and it, it's really important for that aspect of it, as well as sharing uh, celebration and your colleagues and your, your friends' um, achievements and, you know, posting some of the work that you're doing and just that's how technology evolves, right? It is this kind of shared collaboration and communication. So um, super important. I didn't realize how important it was uh, when I was in undergrad. Uh, I had one, I just had my little picture on it. And I think maybe it was enough that they were like, oh, okay, yeah, you, you have one. Um, but, you know, and they could put a face to the name at least, but I didn't really have a bunch of stuff documented. And I, I think even if you don't wanna go full resume on there, even just putting some highlights of what you're interested in or what you're looking for. Um, it's just another tool that you can use. And, and yeah, I would encourage it. Perfect, thank you. Um, I would be remiss if I did not, if I forgot to mention that this session, it was in collaboration with the College of Engineering and Integrated Design, who provided me the names of these wonderful people who are sitting on our panel, and also the University Career Center, so I would like to ask, and, and you can, you know, if you didn't utilize the services, that's fine. But did you, and did any of you while you were in at UTSA, and Patrick, you still are um, in your PhD program, but during your, the course of your, of your degrees, did you utilize any type of career services, whether it be through the college or through the career center as you were prepping to look for your job, whether that even be as simple as someone reviewing your resume? Um, did any of you do that? Yeah, Victoria, did you want to talk about your experiences, like what you did with the with mm -hmm. either the college or the career center? Yeah, so I, I specifically Jill Ford. Um, I'm sure she's still there. She is awesome. Jill, does, yes, Jill Ford helped put this together. Amazing, so yes, she does amazing things for the college. Um, and I definitely had multiple one on one sit downs with her, just kind of talking about like because I was getting really nervous, right? I'd been applying since October and I hadn't really heard anything for the ones I did. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like I'm at this point where I have to decide and just breathe. Like, you know, she, you know, 
her, in her position and in that student success position um, of that, the whole goal is to help students find success outside of school, right? Um, you, they don't want just people walking around with paper degrees that they don't aren't using for anything. Um, so I had multiple sit downs with her and I kind of worked with her to do these. Um, I think I revised my resume with her. And I also, um, then after I like met with her and actually talked to her one-on-one -on -one, instead of just getting like email blasts, I was like, anytime I saw her email blast, I was like, this company's clearly talked to her about something. I should definitely go to this info session or this win Wednesday thing um, and, and figure out more about it. Um, so I definitely utilized that portion of it and just helping me grow my network and understand what opportunities were out there and, and which companies specifically were like coming to UTSA saying, we need more engineers that do this, this and this, right? Um, and that was really helpful for me. Great, anybody else? Um, yeah, so I, I also had Jill look at my resume back in 2016 or so, it's been a little bit. Um, the Student Success Center in the College of Engineering and Integrated Design is really awesome. Definitely swing by and ask them any questions, whether it's a question about a career path or how to get involved and stuff like that. Uh, they are incredible when it comes to getting you through the door, basically. The Career Center itself, I didn't really do too much with. I, I worked with Scotty back then to organize, help work, basically help organize a career fair a little bit, but um, they also have, from what I saw, great uh, resume services and um, job hunting. I don't know if they still have like the the suits you can rent in case you need a suit, but that was also super helpful too for students. Yeah. And Yvonne, did you use any of the services? Yeah, so I, um, I with the Career Services Center, um, when I got a, I actually got a job offer right at the end of my undergrad. And um, I wasn't really sure, you know, is this, competitive, you know, are they, you know, utilizing the skills, like, how does this job description align with, you know, my, you know, marketability, and, and uh, so I actually took the job offer to the counselor at the Career Services Center, and they sat down and looked it over, and we talked about the salary offer, um, and I ended up passing on that job, because I, they were, they, they were candid with me, they were like, this is a little bit lower than what we've been seeing average-wise that UTSA grads are receiving, um, but so I, I kind of held out for a couple of months, and then when I had a chance to interview with Standard Arrow and got a job offer from them, it was actually 25% more salary. Um, so just kind of waiting, you know, those couple of months um, and keeping myself basically like on the market um, and actively looking um, paid off. So it was helpful to be able to re rely on those experts in the Career Services Center who have a little more eyes and ears to you know, market trends and, and salary trends and things like that, that I wasn't, I had no experience on. I, I didn't know whether that amount of money was, you know, good or not, or, you know, what, what else could be out there. So yeah, definitely. If you're not sure, um, you know, you need a second opinion, basically uh, reach out to that for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, the last question I want to ask you all before opening it up to the students what is the most rewarding or enjoyable part of your career? And we'll start with Victoria. Um, for me, I think the thing that kind of gets me into work every single day uh, is knowing that no day is the same. Um, in this applied research and development field, you're constantly solving new problems that didn't exist yesterday, like quite literally. Um, so always having that variety and spice of life in my job is really, really nice. Um, but also I would say the rewarding part of it, right, is when you're doing something new and kind of paving a new like technology area, you're going to fail so many times. Um, you're going to mess up a lot. I can't emphasize this enough because in school, I always wanted to get the right answer, but in life, you can't always have the right answer. You're going to have to fail. Um, and while that may be disappointing for the hundred times something doesn't go right, on the hundred and first time it works, oh my goodness, the feeling that you get from that, I, I can't even portray it in words, but it's it's heartwarming, really, it is. Um, and that's, for me, the best part of my job is when it's something finally works and you know you've put your blood, sweat, and tears in it, um, and you get that feeling, it, there's nothing like it. And Patrick? 
Yeah, so just like Victoria said, everything is changing. Um, a lot of there's so many things to learn in engineering and just in the whole process around how to get something out the door, how to formalize it and produce it. Um, the biggest thing for me is the different types of people I get to meet almost every day. Um, they have me doing slightly engineering, slightly system engineering, so more management. And you have to work with all different fields, all different types of people. Um, and that's a experience by itself, definitely. Um, and also with, uh, particularly on my side with the government, seeing how, how big the big picture is with things, um, all the different layers and how basically you get to where you're at and just the complexity of it all. But definitely for me, it's, it's mainly just the different people you work with. Um, it's a re rewarding experience as, as you keep going on. Thank you. And Yvonne. I think uh, what's been most rewarding for me is the ability to help people solve problems. And I think one of the biggest takeaways I got from leaving college was I was a critical and analytical problem solver. As an engineer, you, you've spent years learning how to solve problems, learning how to approach them. And I really take that to heart when I'm working with clients, um, even when I worked in at, at other places. Um, you know, looking at ways to help people better their lives or solve the problem that they're trying to tackle um, and get resolution to is, is a vital role that you, you serve. Um, and so it's really important to me to understand, you know, what, what, what their problem is, what that means to them, uh, what a solution would mean to them and um, help them navigate getting there. And it's not even just the clients, even within the business itself, you know, looking at our standard operating procedures, how can I help the employees, um, you know, make their job easier, make it more, um, you know, kind of tear down some of the, the roadblocks or the walls that they might be facing um, as a business and how can we structure processes and things like that to make their jobs easier. So it's, there's a lot of opportunity to, to um, help people. And that's what I find to be so rewarding, whether it's you're in a very specific technical role or you're, you're running the business as a whole. So really enjoy it. Perfect. Thank you all so much.